Welcome back to Newsmakers. We are with Jamie Goff, Peter Townsend and Andrew Holden. Some unsavoury revelations this week about what is fouling the Avon River and it's bad news brown for dogs and ducks. Um, they are the biggest sources of faecal matter in the river. We'll put Rover to one side, but what about the ducks? Should it be curtains for Daffy and Donald? Jamie. Well, what do they propose that they do? Are they going to sort of extend duck hunting season all around to the... To the from the terrace, perhaps we could get shotguns out there with our lattes <laughs> and, and yeah. take out the uh, take out the ducks. But I, I think this is no dirty. As much as I love dirty secrets, I don't think it is a big dirty secret. You know, uh, the revelation that there's duck poo in, in, in the river. I think uh, would have been something I could have safely assumed. I think mm. anyone that deserve that, that decides to uh, do, do regular laps in the Avon River, probably uh, Darwin's theory should take him out. Because mm. I, I, honestly, though, you, no one swims in the Avon River anyway, do they? Well. You still see people fish in the Avon, which gives me the heavies, to be honest. Would you fish in that river? I've seen a couple of nice sized fish there. I don't know that mm -hmm. I'd eat them. Mm -hmm. The ones who do get sick though are the rows. The rows and the kayakers, yeah. you know, and, and, and for them it's a significant issue. Mm -hmm. um, all those school kids down there training regularly have a horrible time of it. Um, I don't think you can shoot the ducks, unfortunately, but we've got to deal with the cows yes. farting as well. So maybe yes. there's a maybe there's an all an all purpose bag that can be popped at the back of wildlife that yes. solves a whole range of problems. Yes, exactly. We could do sort of like the equivalent of carbon capture, couldn't we? Exactly. With the wildlife, yeah. yes. Actually, the ducks have taken a bit of the heat off the dirty dairying this week, haven't they? <laughs> to be honest, Peter. <laughs> well, yeah. I, look, we, we, do have, we do have to work on our environment here. We have to clean up our rivers. We, ha we are cleaning up our estuary. I mean, I'm looking forward to the day that the Heathcote estuary turns blue when we uh, eventually get our, <laughs> our um, waste disposal out to sea. Um, the, the, this is a, a comprehensive issue. I mean, the, the duck stuff is, is natural, or as natural as you're going to get in an ecosystem. So I can wear that. I have some problems with the, the dog stuff, mm -hmm. because a lot of that is directed into our rivers through inadequate stormwater drainage um, systems. And I have a, a, an even bigger problem with the, the runoff that comes out of uh, people washing their cars and going down into the gutter and straight into the river. You know, sure. that. So it's a matter of degree. Um, I think we should be working to make our rivers as clean as we possibly can, but I don't think that we can avoid natural contamination of natural waterways. That's part of what we are. All right. Well, the great New Zealand accent um, is the most attractive in the English-speaking world. So says a BBC poll, and who could argue with them? And as the press website headline said so beautifully, really choice, eh? Um, <laughs> is Australia demanding a recount, Mr Holden? Fair suck of the sap. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let, let's not forget, it's after English, Irish and Scots, I think, was the story. Yeah. So, you know, you haven't leapfrogged the Scots no. that nobody can understand anyway. No. <laughs> can I assure you that Australians are very adept at, at taking the things from New Zealand that we think are of value, like Farlap and a couple of other elements? The accent is not one of them. Right. Andrew has spoken. Jamie, uh, are we proud? Should we be proud of our accent? Well, I don't think we have uh, re really any other choice. We, we, we sort of have to be at something that we're stuck with. I th I've always quite liked it. But the bizarre thing is I think every nation tends to believe that they don't really have an accent, it's mm -hmm. everyone else that does. Mm. So I remember when I was over in the States and I heard, that, heard these people going on there, you guys speak funny really, don't you? And I was over there for a few months and I got on the plane and I, and I heard... Welcome, thank you for choosing to fly in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, we do have one actually, don't we? Um, I quite like it though, I'm quite proud of that fact. You'd be loving it, wouldn't you, Peter? Yeah, I don't have any problem with the, the great New Zealand accent. Mm. Although, we, we, you know, if you come from Gora, you've got a completely different accent. And <laughs> I grew up in Rotorua, where it was pretty good up there, eh? Mm. So um, it's completely different depending on where you are. Yeah. But I guess overall, I find in, in my international travels that, that people perceive our accent as being attractive, they perceive our presentation as language as being soft yeah. and and sort of um, encouraging of conversation and I think that's good. We we don't share the sort of harsh guttural tones that some other accents share. We're not yes, some of our nearer neighbours indeed. Yes. Um, 30 seconds on the clock for uh, free shots. Um, who do you want to have a plug and poke at? Uh, Peter. Yeah, I'll go first. I want to, I want to have a plug of Air New Zealand as I mentioned. I just looked to Washington and back inside a week and man what a nice airline we've got compared to some of those American airlines that I travelled across the states and 
And the, the uh, brickbat would be to people who are resistant to change in this community but not prepared to carry the costs of no change. I think we need to think about that. All right. Very quickly. I think they're very good ones. I, I think I'll give my thumbs up to anyone that doesn't understand, and this, uh, I'm, I'm not wrong, I mean this, anyone that doesn't understand the rules of the bus lanes, right. the fact is uh, you've got a couple of hours on the way in that you that you uh, can't use it. Mm. Every other time you can, so mm. I just cruise through this, pushing on, <laughs> step aside, no one else understands it. So the longer they don't understand it, nice. the, the quicker my commute to It's your work. board that's all to blame for this, you realise. Well, exactly, and so <laughs> I'm not telling anyone how it actually works, so I can utilise it. All right, I've got 10 seconds. Peter's guaranteed his upgrade on the next New Zealand flight. The All Whites, fantastic. <laughs> Let's hope they get to the World Cup. Lovely. Uh, now, the pick of the week it comes from Toyota City, Japan. Um, of course, we've got firework season coming in what a couple of weeks' time. Do not try this at home. This is a fella making an offering to the gods. This is some ancient Japanese tradition, apparently. You can see a man in there, I think, amongst the shower of sparks. He's holding some bangs. Apparently, this is an age-old custom, and most participants suffer varying degrees of burns. You don't say. Of course, in this country, you'd be covered by ACC. <laughs> uh, the Newsmakers poll. Last week's question, should the Washington Way skate park be enlarged despite the vandalism complaints? 74% of you said yes. Good stuff. Prize winner T. Hawkins. Uh, this week's question, did Barack Obama deserve the Nobel Peace Prize? We'll throw it over to you. Yes or no? Uh, email newsmakers at ctv.co.nz. Vote on the web, mikeyardley.com or post to PO Box 1100 Christchurch. Do so and you'll be in to win Michael Bublé's latest album and also this fantastic new book showcasing all things Kiwiana. Crikey! From piggy squares and jelly tips to bottle drives and bitty bits. Nice. Make your vote count and you're in to win. Thank you very much to our distinguished panel, Andrew Holden, Jamie Gough yes. and uh, Peter Townsend. On Tuesday night, by the way, Ken Franklin, the director of the Arts Centre, is with us to address the concerns and the future of the Arts Centre. Have a great weekend. Good night. <laughs>